its diagnosis, its treatment, um, how to prevent it, a small outbreak of acidosis, and then an experiment. So here's my background. So first, what is acidosis? Well, it is also known as chlamydiosis, um, and it's derived from the Greek word pasidikos, which means carrot, and it's also called carrot disease. It's caused by a bacteria called C. pasidikai, and so right here is C. pasidikai bacteria. So the history of pasidikosis. Well, it was first discovered in 1879 by a Swedish scientist named J. Ritter, and he was examining a strange case of pneumonia, and he noticed a link between all his patients with this strange case of pneumonia, that all of them had been in contact with the tropical bird. Um, so it was first recognized after an <coughs> epidemic in Argentina after a shipment of 5,000 carrots from 1929 to 1930. And um, following the shipment, 800 people were diagnosed, and some of them died. So um, how psittacosis is treated? Well, um, transmitted. Um, it's most commonly transmitted in birds in the parent, in the parrot family, like parakeets and macaws. Um, it's recently uh, been found in cats, mice, and other birds, such as seagulls and pigeons. And it can be contracted from human to human through the respiratory tract, but that's very rare and hardly happens. And can also be uh, contracted by handling birds in a slaughterhouse or by breathing in dry bird pooping. Okay, so some symptoms of psychosis. Well, first, um, the ones in birds are lethargy, which is also um, like low energy, uh, ruffled feathers, weight loss, and brittle feathers. Um, also, the common symptoms in humans are chills fever, flu, um, and pneumonia. And like the worst of all is no symptoms at all because you don't even know that you have psittacosis until after. And so here is a picture of a bird with psittacosis. And you can see that like a lot of its feathers have come, have come off. Um, and you can also see that it's like, it has lost a lot of weight and it's a very thin bird. You can see some of its like ribs and stuff. So the diagnosis, well, as I said, it's a strange form of pneumonia. So um, they do a chest x-ray to see if you have pneumonia first. And from there, they have a blood sample so they can look at your blood and see if you have the bacteria that causes psittacosis, C. psittacai. So the treatment, well, it's treated with antibiotics such as uh, deoxycycline and tetracycline. And antibiotics should be um, should be taken by uh, the patient for at least 45 days after being infected and diagnosed with psittacosis. So how to prevent um, contracting psittacosis? Well, obviously you should buy um, birds from trusted sources so you know that the birds are not previously infected. Um, and you should also clean your bird's cages regularly because as I said, um, psittacosis can become airborne and that's usually when it's transmitted to humans by the air because you get it through your respiratory tract. And so a small outbreak of psittacosis was for four people in the United States in a rural community. And so case one was a female school teacher who is 36 years of age. And she was a little bit overweight and she uh, acquired anorexia, headaches, and lassitude, which is low energy. And she uh, obviously lost weight um, because of the anorexia, and she developed a bad cough. And the case two was a 45-year-old farmer who uh, developed psittacosis, and he complained about headaches, weight loss, anorexia, and he also complained about a cough. And then, uh, and then the case three was a 39-year-old carpenter, and he acquired anorexia too, better malaise, which is like the general symptom, um, cough he and headaches and weight loss, just <coughs> like the other cases. And also case four was his six-year-old daughter, 
who developed cassette coexists, um, and she developed a dry cough and anorexia and lassitude. So the two, uh, two cases were came in contact with the bird, and then two cases uh, didn't. Um, and then case three and four were um, obviously related because they were father and daughter. So human-to-human uh, -human transmission was suspected. So this is an experiment study. Uh, first is the purpose. The purpose of the study was to see um, where pathidicosis occurs, um, most often um, in Sweden and why. And then in addition, the experiment was to find the potential risk factors of pathidicosis. So the methodology is first, um, the 23 cases in Skane and Kronoberg uh, were investigated, um, and eight cases were suspected to all have come from this one patient that was in a hospital, because they had all come in contact with this person who was ill. Um, and the laboratory confirmed that the diagnosis of the patient uh, detected of the respiratory separation by PCR or poly polymerase chain reaction that was over 256. And the eight cases from the human to human transmitted transmission uh, were excluded from the study since they were all like somewhat related. And the questionnaire was then filled uh, out to uh, regulate the inconsistency inconsistencies between age and sex and behavior. And so they were filled out also to, um, to regulate the amount of wild bird and domestic bird exposure. And so here is the table. And this is supposed to show that there was hardly any correlation between the contact with domestic birds, such as visiting uh, the shop or cage birds, or uh, being in contact with domestic birds at home, and then also with wild birds, and like feeding them in the wild. And so it shows that there was hardly any correlation that they found. And so this, this map is to show uh, the places where they included <coughs> cases, like you can see uh, Skane right here and Cronenberg, but then these two that are in the blue were not included because they were kind of outliers because um, there were no other cases of psychosis around that area. And so my results and conclusions uh, continued uh, Pathidicosis has often occurred in Skane and Kronoberg, um, where 23 out of 25 cases in southern Sweden um, were there. And then there was no statistical significance between them, but there was a stronger correlation between the wild bird exposure other than feeding. So feeding the birds was not as like correlated with um, like being around wild birds as was doing other things with wild birds. And it was proven that in Sweden, most cases were in the rural communities um, rather than in the popular cities because there's more birds there um, that you could be exposed to. <coughs> so my acknowledgments are uh, Dodd family, Dr. Moses Williams, Mr. Robinson, Dr. Charles Nib, and Ms. Crystal Lau. And here's my bibliography. Any questions, comments, or constructive criticism? Research 